March day five of the English Premier League complete. Done. Right. Mm. And we're heading to March day six, but of course we have to check. Mm -hmm. What happened? Who one over the weekend? Who lost? Who drew? Who was crying and who mm -hmm. was laughing? <laughs> mm. I really wanted some team from London to be crying, yeah. but unfortunately i told i'll remind you because you are laughing with my prediction of course we're gonna be taking a look at that and of course on the early kickoff mm -hmm. on man on saturday i mean mm. chelsea mm. uh let's say say got the bragging rights for london, london derby against west ham yes mm -hmm. a three nil victory and mm -hmm. of course we had given i had given Chelsea three one actually are you sure? Yes, I am the one who gave Chelsea three one. Three one. Yeah, you yes. you you gave it two one. I think it was two one. But yeah, it is what it is. They still won. So close uh, to a clean sheet. Yeah, to a clean sheet. Um, somehow I think West Ham were not playing like a team that could score. But if they were serious, they had some chances. Uh, we saw Paqueta and um, and uh, the the Ghanaian. Yeah boy also coming close to scoring kudus, kudus yeah kudus uh, coming close to scoring in that game and it was yeah a good game for chelsea i should say uh because uh winning games like those gives you momentum yeah and um yeah good for them it will push for them for the even the top four and maybe even the title contenders because i remember after that game they came to second in the league yeah. and i was just like okay so uh, and many Chelsea fans were actually very excited be being second for at least uh, some time. So, yeah, good performance. Once again, let me say, like, maybe I feel uh, somehow West Ham played not so good, not a bad game, mm -hmm. but they had what you call criminal defending. Mm -hmm. Because there is no way you'll be caught on counter attack when you have uh, three versus one, two, yeah. uh, four versus two, like, on several occasions that's yeah. what's supposed to yeah. happen if yeah. you want to uh to keep a clean sheet or get, get a win actually yeah. Yeah. then we also later on we saw um liverpool mm. back to winning ways beating fc bournemouth three goals to nil yep a quick fire of goals in the first half and then just relaxing in the second half was i mean a good performance for them and they had to bounce back like that you know i had predicted i think four nil i was waiting for that fourth goal i waited I waited, I waited, Until but I couldn't get waiting. it. Yes, still waiting for that goal. I hope it comes in this match day against Wolves for them. But yeah, a, a, a solid performance from them. Uh, Luis Diaz with an amazing performance. Yeah. It was good to see him uh, come back on the score sheet. Uh, they look strong, Liverpool. They look like a team who just wants to them to score alone in the match. So they will be denying a lot of teams chances to score. And yeah, great performance from. Alice, of course yes. they are winning and winning and i think now we're gonna be having maybe three horse race uh for for the, for the title race of course uh then later on we saw tottenham deny me a correct score but but you got it because <laughs> i said uh two, two one, one and they got it three, three one, one. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah, a correct score is something hard to get, and when you get it, you have to feel proud about it. So yeah. I'm proud that I got Tottenham right, and um, it's a game that I thought uh, Brentford will score one, Tottenham three, they did. Uh, good performance for them, although, yeah, as a team, they still also have a long way to go because crazy things happen in that game as well that could have maybe changed the uh, outcome. But it is what it is, they won 3-1 and they also look like a team that could um, give other teams a run for the money as we will see in this coming match day. Right, then the last match on Saturday we saw Crystal Palace and Manchester United settle for a barren draw. Mm -hmm. You want to say something about Manchester right. United? Yes, yes, I yes, know yes. you want. I have to. <laughs> this is the best performance Man Manchester United have put this season. Agree with me? Agreed. Yes, but they didn't get maximum uh, points. Let me say United somehow were unlucky. They had all the chances, hitting, striking the posts twice. Mm -hmm. Ganacho and in succession. And Bruno, Bruno Fernandes. Fernandes. And of course, it was interesting to see Man United play that way. Yeah. Kind of composed, maybe because Palace didn't create a lot of chances. Yeah. As they actually had a chance to test, um, let me say, uh, Onana mm -hmm. around maybe two minutes to stop it, uh, to half time. Mm -hmm. But due to panic Modi just uh, put it straight and that was the first shot on target yeah, yeah. that shows how man united tried to press the, i remember they pl they played the first 15 uh 20 opening minutes with united pinning them mm -hmm. on there it's a good uh, uh status to see united 
they are trying to regain confidence and i hope that we, they're gonna show it against tottenham and we have an interesting match mm. uh, of course a clean sheet for for onana mm. good performance from bruno fernandez i think now he's seeing the bruno fernandez mm. um i saw some silly substitutes from uh from eric ten hag uh, bringing in Marcus Rashford, who completely did nothing actually, <laughs> until the introduction of who came in Ganacho later, not Ganacho, who came in after. We had a number of players coming in. Yes. We had uh, Hoyland. Hoyland, who Hoyland came changed in. the game actually, because I saw <coughs> when Ahmad Diallo, uh, the first uh, Marcus Rashford came in for Ahmad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ahmad was doing way better way better than even any other player. On any the other pitch. player, and now you sub him, you bring Marcus Rashford, the game goes on dead. Close to United conceding, actually. But good to see Hoyland back. That's my guy, and you know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, for Man United, we'll see. We'll see when they play uh, Tottenham. Tottenham. Right. No <laughs> ad from I'm you. I'm saving my words for Tottenham. Right. <laughs> Super Sunday, we saw Manchester City and Arsenal. Both teams settle for a 2 2 draw. Mm -hmm. A game with lots of controversy, mm -hmm. which left fans fuming, mm -hmm. others smiling mm. and others was really broken by by that match it is a match which left one only rodri out probably for the remainder of the season with acl injury mm -hmm. first things first you want to say something before i say well not much but a typical premier league game against two teams which are the best in the premier league at the moment and it was a good show i mean everything was in that game very dramatic very controversial decisions on both sides of the field and at the end of the day it ended in a 2-2 no one would have believed that uh, there was a chance probably Arsenal at, the, at this point could go there and uh, get away with a point especially after all the events that happened after they even got a red card in the second half and I mean um, good performance it's a good point I think for Arsenal because it gives them confidence that you know what uh, this, this is this it's it's believable that even we, you can go to Etihad and take a point or yeah. even more from that game depending on how the situation is so it will add more confidence to them and I'm particularly um, I'm impressed by how they press and how they they defend especially because it's a unit that is very unbreakable I've seen most of their games since the season began and it, this the arsenal is unbreakable but for manchester city well um also i deserve a 2-2 two -two draw because you're watching the game and you feel like uh everything they had during the game they deserved something from it yeah but as a man united fan not good to see other teams playing like that and um yeah sadly i think it's gonna be you said three horse race and i tend to believe no it's still probably a two horse race Okay, me. we'll see that because you've been ruling Liverpool out. Uh, my comments on that game, I have several things to point at. And one is Michael Oliver will always want to be on the talk after the match. Like he wants everything to be about himself as a referee and not the players. Now, listen here. Um, I'll take you back a while at the Emirates when Arsenal uh, were playing Manchester City. Matteo Kovacic had a yellow card and he fouled. Martin Odegaard, a nasty tackle which needed a yellow card, with, which was supposed to be the second yellow card, but he said what? Uh, the referees and the board supported the decision not to give him a second yellow card. In the name, I don't want to spoil this game, it's full of intensity. Then later on, at, at Etihad, Trossard is on a yellow card and kicking a ball in less than, it was 0 point around 0.83 seconds after the foul and the kick, something like that. Now, uh, he was booked, uh, second yellow card and a red card, of course. Uh, I'll talk about that later. But in the first 50 opening matches for the Premier League, we've seen a hundred delays, a hundred delays so far in the league, and only four have been punished. The first player to be punished was William Saliba from Arsenal. The second player was Declan Rice from Arsenal. Second uh, yellow card and a red card. The third player was Bruno Fernandes from Manchester United and the fourth one was from Arsenal, Lehandro Trelsan, which also resulted to a red card. Now, this kind of uh, stupid action which is going on and the referees trying to spoil the game, we saw uh, Sobozlai doing delaying restart. Uh, we've seen it happen against uh, Brighton, it has happened uh, with Tottenham, it has happened with Manchester City. So, such kind of 
officiating is not really good. On the side of getting a yellow card for player like Trossard, for player like Declan Rice, sometimes you need to know when you are, when you are on a yellow card, you need to be a smart player. Do not give the referee any chance to get to you, to punish you. You on a yellow card, try to behave because now kicking the ball, that is nonsense. And everybody, before the start of the season, they made it clear. There will be a booking, a caution for delaying restart. Let's dive to match day six of the English Premier League. <laughs> match day uh, six will see the first match, of course. The oil money meeting. Newcastle United versus Manchester City. Mm -hmm. A difficult match, actually. Um, you mentioned something that in the previous match, um, Rodri got injured. Yep. I think that's big news for Manchester City's camp because you don't want your best players, especially players who you bank on. Uh, your best players, a Ballon d'Or contender, actually, getting injured for the rest of the season. I'm sure um, Pep is a tactician and he's going to do everything to make sure he salvages this situation. I don't know when it's going to be. But still, Rodri hasn't been playing in the first games of the season. They are still winning. Yeah. Although it brings that, you know, to the team. Like, you know, our best player is out. One of the best players. And even including uh, Kevin De Bruyne. Or, okay, I feel in this game against Newcastle, it's a tough match for them because Newcastle at home is a team which has been showing most big teams how it's done there. And I don't want to go into very much details. I think Manchester City still has all the capability to win these kinds of games. However, I feel it's not going to be as easy as it would have been when they have all their players around. And that's why... Um, these matches are going to be close for them during this period until they find the balance. I'm going to go for a close one. Newcastle scoring, Man City scoring, Haaland probably on the score sheet, and a close, a 2-1 victory. For right. Uh, Manchester City must. Manchester City have to get back to winning ways. They know a draw or a loss over the weekend. They could find themselves number three on the log because Liverpool, Arsenal are chasing and they have by the look on paper easier fixtures when you look when you compare uh like you said uh, manchester city i said it here before this is not the manchester city so last season in terms of defensive wise man City were a team to record like proper team at the back but now i think city will at the end of the day concede but then again Haaland is on fire 10 goals in the first five opening matches unbelievable massive one and here we go so i think City will get a win, easy one, not like an, a tight as you say, New, this is not the Newcastle I saw last season, and I'm going to give them a 3-1 victory. Mm, later, still very possible. Still later very on, possible. we will see the Gunners back. Mm. Yeah, I'm glad you noticed this, team playing two matches away, two matches at home. Yeah, yeah. Arsenal return to the Emirates at the carpet, and they'll be up again as newly promoted. Leicester City. Leicester City. After a long run of them g having uh, very, very difficult fixtures, putting in mind they've played Aston Villa away from home, they've played City at the Etihad, and they also had a game in the midweek where they played Atlanta for the Champions League. Uh, it is a time where Arsenal has to breathe, and I'm not taking anything away from Leicester. These are the games that Arsenal like. I mean, at home, where they can bully you, where they can do everything they can do to make sure they uh, have their goal differences and even more so keep a clean sheet on it. So I see a kind of game where um, Arsenal are scoring a number of goals and I don't know who's going to start in the defense for Arsenal because it's I think they've found a balance where sometimes Calafiori can start, sometimes I think um, Timba also Timba is starting injured, on the left. Right? No, 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 he, he featured, he, he featured for City. So yeah, exactly. So, like, I don't know who might start, but their defense, whether there's some changes, there's still possibility that they can still keep attention. So I'm going to go uh, them scoring at least three goals in this match. And I don't see, I don't see with the way Arsenal are defending, with the way um, Raya He's keeping his gloves all over the post. I don't see Le uh, Leicester scoring. So I'm going to go for a 3 nil, 4 nil kind of victory. But if I were to settle for one, then it's going to be a 3 nil. How about you? Right, close. I'll agree with you. But then again, my question is, does Arsenal have the capacity to create chances since Martin Odegaard 
is out injured. But guess what? Leandro Trossard was red carded against Manchester City by you, but he will feature mm. on Saturday. Here is the reason why a yellow card and red card counts when it comes to FA Cup and Carabao the FA Cup. Cup. The Carabao yeah. Cup. Mm. So, without a doubt, he'll miss uh, the match uh, the, against is it Bolton. Yeah, Bolton. Yes, Playing Bolton. Against yeah. Bolton, and of course, he'll be available for selection. So, once again, expect a similar squad to what was there at the head hard. Mm -hmm. And this is a match which I feel Ryan now is supposed to be back. Uh, he knows he did wonders against Tottenham, against Atlanta, against Manchester City, all away matches. Keeping a clean sheet to, at Atlanta and uh, conceding two at head hard with a um, 10 man uh, squad, then Raya is likely to keep yet again another clean sheet. I wouldn't give us you know, a lot of goals that they're like three. Uh, Vardy poses threat going forward. If Arsenal attack and forget themselves at the back, there is possibility. Vardy might score, but I'm not giving him a goal this weekend. So I'll go for Arsenal winning that match, two goals to nil. Mm, fair enough, still possible. Still on Saturday, later on we'll see at round five, uh, we'll see Mm. Brighton traveling mm. all the way to Stamford Bridge to face Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Now, these are the kinds of games where you look at them, you look at this fixture, you look at how Chelsea have been playing at home or even away, just the full form of their Premier League this season. And you look at Brighton's and you see that it's going to be a very difficult game to actually predict because Brighton had unbeaten. Chelsea on the other side, they look like they have a better run away from home yep. than home. And it's just, it brings you to a point where it's very difficult for you like to try to pinpoint places where this can be won. All right, but um, because I believe Chelsea are having a good run and they are on a run for something, they are actually number five right now, right? They are, are placed fifth on the table. It's giving them more momentum to keep going, 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 going. And... I don't know for Brighton, but I believe this is the first game of the season for the Premier League which they're going to lose because um, the way they have also been playing the last few games hasn't been like convincing because they drew against Nottingham, I believe, at home. And then there's another game which also they drew. And yeah, for the prediction purposes, I think though that Brighton will score in this one and Chelsea will also score. So it's going to be a goals gallo, you know. And um, yeah, there's a possibility of it even having like five goals this game. So 3-2, three, 3-1, two, three, one, two, one. but I'm going to go for a 3-2 victory for Chelsea. Right, so I believe uh, Brighton, despite drawing their recent match, they have all what checks to break Chelsea's uh, defense. And once again, Chelsea's attack is on fire. Mm -hmm. They keep on creating chances. Madusko and... Uh, and uh, Jackson, they yeah. are playing good football and they are scoring. Mm -hmm. That is what matters. Mm -hmm. I don't see any of the teams keeping a clean sheet. Mm -hmm. Chelsea somehow were almost caught by West Ham. Mm -hmm. It happened they scored a goal too early and it confused uh, West Ham's back line. So um, I feel both teams will drop points mm -hmm. over the weekend. <laughs> Something close to like a 1-1 one -one draw, Chelsea and Brighton or a 2-2. Mm -hmm. But let me pick one. <laughs> Both teams are scoring. <laughs> that is the a easiest you can get from a 2-2 or a 1-1 one, one draw. Of 2-2. <laughs> <laughs> then just say a draw. Of 2-2. Just yeah. say a draw. A draw. Okay. At round 7.30, we'll see Liverpool traveling to Molina to take on Wolves. Mm. Yeah, Liverpool have been, um, maybe I should say, this season on form, on contrary to what I expected. And it's another game where um, they will be looking forward to taking all the points uh, at Molino. Although Molino is not a very easy pack to go and just get all the points. So uh, we saw Luis Diaz scoring a brace. And uh, I particularly think maybe there's going to be a difference in scorers because Salah did not feature in the last one. So even when we were discussing fantasy with Alan, I, I, I said there's a chance that I might uh, Captain Salah on this one. I don't want to jinx it, but I believe this is a game where he will show what he's got. Uh, he's one of the best uh, players in the Premier League for some time now. And yeah, I'm going to go for something like a 3-1 victory because I don't think they will keep a clean sheet, but they will still win this game. So I'm going to go for a 3-1 victory. Well, Liverpool will win this match. Uh, that's my gut feeling because uh, Wolves are not that threat. 
But then again, Liverpool's backline isn't that so good. Um, I tend to agree with you. Scoreline of three one, three one two one. Any can happen, mm -hmm. but let me say the four three one. Mm. Yeah, fair enough. And just a prediction: Ipswich versus Aston Villa. Uh, Aston Villa to win. Ipswich is at home, right? Yes. Aston Villa has everything that they need to win this game. I believe Unai has brought this team to a whole new level. That's why I still feel like they can score three. And Ipswich at home might also grab one because they are a team who plays very well. Uh, just that they can't match what is there in the Premier League, and that's why I think Aston Villa will still replicate a three-one kind of victory. Or two one, but yeah, three one, three one fair is fair enough for that prediction. Right, yeah, I that think uh, uh, VL will win this match uh, with a clean sheet, mm -hmm. two nil. Mm. Right, I wanted to see Super Sunday, <laughs> but it's not because Manchester United will be hosting Tottenham at Old Trafford, one of the toughest stadium to grab a victory. Not even United can win there. What's what were you victory? saying first? Leave alone United get grabbing a win at Old Trafford. What were you saying? With, it's not a Super Sunday? It's, it's not a Super Sunday. It is a Super Sunday. These are two dying teams. It is a Super Sunday. These are two it's, struggling teams. Every time Manchester United plays, it's a Super Day. It is a Super Day. M M and this is the time I was waiting for because this game comes at a good time as well for us as Manchester United fans because uh, we've had quite some fixtures but not still very good enough. Maybe amongst the five games that we've played so far, it's just Liverpool who uh, who seem to look like a big fixture for us. No, so, no, no, mismatch. So it is a good time to play Spurs, especially at home again, to see if they will do what Liverpool did to us. But I think it is a different time because right now uh, Manchester United looks different. They play differently. I think the only problem is Sometimes the manager is uh, not very consistent with his picks and substitutions, as we had mentioned in yep. the beginning. Because how are you drawing a game and then you take off a defender and then you put another defender? Like, what are you looking for in this game? I mean, what are you targeting? Exactly, and that's why uh, it's a lot of problems. So be, this being a feature match, I don't think there's so many injuries. Hoyland is back for Manchester United. Uh, and Mount. so is Mason Mount as well. Okay. Saw him in training. Malaysia or Malaysia. I don't know even how to pronounce. I forgot how to pronounce his name. Yeah. Many people thought he's dead, but no, he's alive. He was also in the training. And it is a boost for Manchester United, actually, uh, because when you have those players available, it gives you confidence as a manager picking your team. For Tottenham side, I don't think they have so any injuries. Okay. I haven't, not that I know of. And meaning on paper, in terms of injuries and squad available, those teams are equally as good. So in terms of form, I think in the last five matches that have been played so far, Manchester United, of course, lost to Liverpool. Uh, they beat Fulham and then they beat Southampton, and then they drew with Crystal Palace. Uh, for Tottenham, they drew against uh, Leicester, right? Yes. And then they won recently against Brentford, and they also lost against uh, Newcastle, which means that if you look at the form, these two teams probably are not at their best. Maybe it's time now to pick, especially after this game or during this game, but these two teams look like... Uh, they are struggling. Their, their start hasn't been so good this uh, season. So, um, in terms of maybe tacti tactical ability now of the two managers, I believe Tottenham, in terms of tactics at this point in game, they know what they're doing. Like, they have a certain way they play. Whether they are losing or not, that is the philosophy they follow. And if you compare it with Manchester United, sometimes this team decides to turn up and sometimes this team doesn't turn up at all. And I, particularly, being a Manchester United fan, I have worries because we've played five games and none of our forwards has two or more goal involvements, direct involvements in a, in a match. I mean, it's a bad start to have as a team because it means you're not attacking. And especially now that we are zero goal difference. I mean, I think this is the game where Manchester United will put their foot down and begin their season because Tottenham is Tottenham as well. And the Manchester United that I know, especially when they play Tottenham, if it turns up, 
Now you know I'm going to the prediction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I know I, I know things are tough. When <laughs> you don't predict and you start no, laughing. No, I don't want to predict and then you start like okay. No, I don't laugh at your predictions. Right. You only laugh at my predictions. <laughs> I'll prove you wrong. I'll allow you to predict. Okay, so Manchester United, this game, they turn up at Old Trafford. Tottenham is not getting anything from this game. Uh, but the way they play, Tottenham to score is a must. And the way Manchester United defend, terrible. There is a chance Tottenham is scoring. And it could not be just once, it could be even more than once. And that's why it's going to be like an end-to-end -end kind of game. If you check, maybe we had also that bet in the, uh, in the betting section part where we were saying this is an over 2.5 goals game. So I'm going to go for a close one. Manchester United turns up a 2-1 or a 3-2 kind of victory. But I'm going to stick to a 2-1 victory for manchester united when two fools sit for an exam there is one fool who will emerge the winner and struggling man united or host struggling tottenham and um my thinking is united and spurs are two teams you cannot know how they'll turn up they'll play good football this weekend and the following weekend they are nowhere to be seen they're just doing crap things and um I before I go to prediction, mm -hmm. uh, one player was impressed me so far is Delete at the back. Uh, now you have a scoring defender who is always rising high. He missed a chance against the Crystal Palace, and uh, yeah, it happens. It happens. But then uh, once again, uh, Tottenham is a team which loves playing against Manchester United, Manchester United. Uh, and they're gonna press. They have a good. They have good forwards. But then Solanke is there and Son is also there. So these are two team these are two players who will trouble Man United massively this weekend. And I don't see United winning this much. This is the first time I'm going this is the second time I'm going uh, to give United a loss for this <laughs> weekend. And I'm seeing Son and Solanke grabbing a goal. Hoyland on his return, he will score a goal. And I'm giving Tottenham a 2-1 victory. <laughs> well, it is his prediction and you are at home and you know better. You know maybe this game can end in a draw. Why not drop a, a comment in, this, uh, in, in our comment section letting us know between Manchester United and Tottenham who's going to win because this is our feature match and this is the biggest game of the weekend of course he said it's it's not a super Sunday but it is what it is Just like we are excited Ipswich and, and let's wait and see how it goes so remember to hit that uh, uh, comment in our comments and let us know the prediction of this game also yeah we had the kick tip of course please give me and the stop four yes I will I will what I will give you whatever you want yeah. and um just give me a moment because um are you, are you trying to scroll so that you can uh, <laughs> see no i'm position. not rigging anything here yeah so for uh the match day five was it yeah we had the top player who was josphat we'll show it we'll show it here on the screen and he had 19 points a correct score of 2-2 two -two, brighton versus nottingham and another correct score of 3-1 Tottenham Brentford and another correct score of 1-1 wow. one, one Southampton Ipswich and a close correction uh, correct score of Liverpool uh, he had for one so he got three points for that and then um, number two was Brian the Great uh, with 16 points and a few correct scores we're not gonna mention that because it's not very serious when you know number one then there's no need to mention everything so congratulations Josphat. keep playing we want to see your expertise i wish there was a way you could see someone's predictions before because uh i know you want to vincent will be looking at <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> will be wanting to look at Josphat. well for the top overall we still have martin martin is uh, leading the table Wait, with 68 how? points. Yeah. B Binta Major? He didn't play. He didn't play. Yeah. So, Binta Major, make sure that you play this time uh, the kick tip so that at least uh, you build up. Because he's still number two, just yeah. a point below Martin. Yeah. And then number three, we have Vincent. Number four, we have Josphat. And as you said, 
I just Number need five. four. No, 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 no. I need four. <laughs> Top four. You don't okay. qualify to the Champions League. Right. When you're number five. Tied. No. But just to ensure you're on the picture, uh -huh. which position are you in? Me. Yes. I am number four. I'm tied with Josphat. Is that what you wanted? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you just need one person. Right. That is our kick tip. Also remember to play. Uh, remember to uh, have those correct scores before the match day begins because once the match begins, you'll never be able to make those correct scores. Let's see the expertise that you have. The link for the kick tip, we'll have it in the comment section and in the description section and all our socials as well where we have the banter where we have the results of the games and match days overviews will be in the comment section and the description section so that is it from us thank you for tuning in my name is brian you call me vincent and this, this is, is the liquid sports show